call this regular council meeting of the Village of Graham and to order at 7.35 p.m. With us for prayer tonight is Pastor Ward Mikulski. Our councilman and uh, our mayor, and we just pray your blessing upon uh, this meeting we, as they deliberate and make decisions. Uh, for the betterment of our island, we just pray that you would grant uh, them wisdom and guidance and direction, Lord, as they meet together. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Um, we have quite an agenda tonight, so I'm going to try and keep my opening remarks relatively brief. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say a welcome to the exchange students that are here this week from Hamiota, Manitoba. I've been practicing saying that. Um, I had the opportunity to have dinner with them last evening. They seem like a really great group. They are pretty excited to be here. I know our gang that was out there a couple weeks ago had a really good time as well, so I think it's, it's a good opportunity for both schools, so hopefully they'll, um, they'll enjoy their week here on the island. The other thing that I wanted to mention, which is probably a little bit obvious to the people watching at home, is we've done the beginning of a reno here in the council chamber. We have our new tables up. We've kept our old ones in case these don't work out the way we think they're going to, but we think it'll give us a little bit more functionality here in this room. And the other thing that's maybe a little bit less obvious is we've invested in some new cameras that are here in the room. We've removed two of our cameras that were here on tripods. They're now mounted on the wall and they have presets to go to each place as people are talking. So. I'm going to say a shout out to our gang that's back in the control room that are learning this on the fly. So hopefully things will go relatively well tonight and bear with us if we have a couple glitches early on. So hopefully we'll see some benefits from these improvements as we go forward. With that, number four is disclosure of conflict of interest. Hearing none, item number five is adoption of minutes. We have a regular council meeting of February 5th. A special meeting February 20th, March 18th, and March 28th. Um, before we have the motion to accept, I did want to flag that the last two special meetings in particular were to deal with the Capital Borrowing Board. That's where the municipality borrows money essentially for any projects that we take on. One was, the first one was to close off the airport project that we just finished. The second one, which you'll see advertising in the paper for here shortly, was to apply to borrow funds. It doesn't mean that we'll necessarily borrow that full amount or we'll end up borrowing it at all, but it basically it's like a pre-approval for money. And the three projects that we have applied to be able to borrow for is the purchase of a new fire truck. It's the extension, a thousand foot extension on the runway that we have out at the airport. That's a new project that is, um, it's under a federal, provincial, municipal fund. The feds fund 60%, province funds 33%, so the municipality only has 7%, which is a lot less than what we would normally have under the 33-33 fund. The final project is to construct a hangar at the airport, and we feel that this will give us the village of Graham and Ann, the security in the future. Should there be a change again in a medevac provider, the facilities will belong to the village and will be available for use for whoever is going to offer that service. Um, we believe that over the course of the loan, we would make that back in rent and would be cost neutral for the village. But just as an explanation, when that pops up in the paper, I think it might raise a couple of questions. So I thought it was worth bringing up here before we before we got there. So. I don't know if anybody has anything to add to those things, but if not, I'll accept a motion to accept those minutes. I make that motion. You heard the motion from Councillor Turner. Do we have a seconder? No second by. Seconded by Councillor Greenlaw. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Item number six is additions to the agenda. Um, it's not an addition and we can, when we get there to committee reports, the deputy mayor isn't here and he was going to do a library report, but maybe we can just table that till the following meeting when we get there. Hearing no additions, that moves us right up to the RCMP report. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so a bit of a two-fold report this evening. So 
the first part is our, uh, our stats. Uh, so for files from February of 2023, we had 40 files compared to, or sorry, uh, yeah, February of 2023, 40 files compared to February of this year, we had 38 files, so a slight drop. Uh, March 2023 saw 69 files and in March of this year 42 files so again a, a larger drop there. Uh, some of the investigations that we've been looking into a couple of arson investigations one uh, vehicle and one shed. Uh, five assaults, three break and enters, four disturbing the peace, seven mental health calls, five mischief calls, four suspicious persons, four thefts including uh, one of those files, which charges are being recommended to the Crown Prosecutor, uh, two uttering threats, and 11 related to files in regards to traffic. Um, so those are the breakdown of the file types. Uh, reminder as well, uh, we had um, uh, an incident this past weekend where uh, a member had somebody from the public attend their private residence to report a matter. Uh, again, there are a few ways. If it is something that is active and ongoing, 911, that will get you through. If it is not active, but you're looking to still speak with police, you can call 1-888-506-7267. You can also go to the detachment, and uh, if no one is at the detachment, there's a phone inside of a yellow box. Uh, you can pick that up, and that takes you directly to our dispatch center as well. So. Um, our members work hard and tirelessly uh, and we just ask that you know their time at home with their families is respected and and uh, that so that's the first fold of the report so i'll leave it to any questions or comments wow easy crowd tonight uh second one is um <clears throat> it felt like a year ago this month i was here saying hello and now it's a year later and I'm saying goodbye. Uh, so this end of this month, April 28th is my last shift here. I've been promoted to the rank of corporal in Riverview, uh, Caledonia detachment. So I'll be moving there uh, at the end of this month. It's been a very quick year, but uh, a wonderful year. Great to get back home to the East Coast. And uh, the experience here on Grand Manan has been great. People have been very kind and opening and, and welcoming to uh, my family and I, and uh, truly thankful for that. We do have our newest member, uh, Constable Keith Garbett. He has started about a week ago now. Uh, he's replacement for Constable DeWitt. And uh, there is paperwork that has been signed and offers accepted for a replacement for me, and they should be anticipating to start uh, by mid-June to mid-July at the latest. Corporal Stewart has accepted an offer for transfer as well um, to PEI, and so paperwork will be in the process for that to find his replacement. So that's the second half of my report. So again, any questions, comments, or anything? Basically a whole gamut of more based up within the last year. Yeah, so we've got uh, two, yeah, within the last year, like myself included, now we're going to have two, two new faces. Um, and Constable Blay will be here uh, still for another year or so, and then a new corporal uh, whenever that position gets filled. It's uh, one of the new replacements they've been here before. Uh, I understand, or did I misunderstand that? No, one of the one of the my replacement has been here as a relief member, um, okay. and they have grown to love Graham and Ann. So when the offer was put forward to them, they quickly accepted it. So uh, I don't want to divulge their name as of yet because yep. within our organization, anything can happen on the last second. So <laughs> we just wait and see. So, yep, but yeah. Anyone else? Well, I just want to say thank you for all of your hard work while you've been here over this very fast year because it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Um, we've really appreciated your presence here and I hope you extend that to the others who are leaving and have left us as well. So, Absolutely. But best of luck in your new endeavor and 
Thank you. With all due respect, hopefully I don't see you on the side of the road because yeah. that means that my left <laughs> foot has caught up with me. Hey, I can make some more memorable <laughs> events happen in the last year. I don't mind. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, under old business, we have Anglophone South School District inclement weather policy. And apparently I'm speaking to that. And there is a letter in your package, which I am finding right here. Um, so it's a reply from the Honorable Bill Hogan. Thank you for your letter dated February 13th concerning the inclement weather policy for Angl Anglophone South School District. Please be assured that the safety and well-being of students and the staff is a priority for the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development. People transportation operation is the responsibility of the school districts and they are responsible for making decisions on school closure, including inclement weather based on their specific circumstances. We are confident that the school districts make the best decisions possible based on the information available and provided to them at the time of making those decisions. I encourage you to contact the Anglophone so School District Superintendent Derek O'Brien to, dis to discuss how you may work together to ensure information specific to weather situations in the village of Gramadan is available when they make decisions. Thank you for taking the time to share your concerns. Comments or questions? Does it sound like anything's going to change? I, I mean, it's down there, I mean, just a few days ago, I mean, the roads were horrendous. We were back to, you know, us writing this letter in the first place, right? I see Councillor Layton, and then I see Councillor Green. I'm, I'm going to agree with Wayne on that one. Um, I really don't see any changes coming forward. And I think as a village and the people around the room here, I think somebody's going to make some serious decisions we've got the summer coming but this time next fall i think we should have something in place that i mean co collaborations i don't think they're making the best decisions they're not making the best decisions and i think we can do better and we got the summer i think we're past this but come fall we need to make some some serious decisions and some um, maybe take it make take the responsibility on ourselves but anyway hopefully we can work through it with the province I guess um, can't find my copy of that letter but somewhere it says uh, the best decision possible based on the information available if they're not getting local information how can they make the best decision for our local area and I think we should respond to this letter and I'd actually I guess I'll make that a motion bringing that point that appreciate his response but how do you make a local decision with a, some local input, whether it's talking to someone on the ground or putting a camera on the school and looking for themselves or doing something of that sort? You heard the motion from Councillor Green. Do we have a seconder? I will second that. Seconded by Councillor Toll. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. I assume that letter is going to Minister Hogan. You, it, response? That's yeah, who the. the CC okay. Would it be worthwhile in the interim as well to reach out to Derek O'Brien, the superintendent, coming into summer? I mean, he must be from somewhat of a local area. If he's a superintendent, perhaps he'd like to come over and have a chat and we can have a conversation with him to extend an invitation. Yep. Is that. Second step, okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, under old business, we have RSC update. Um, part of this is coming into the RSC is having their annual meeting at the end of the month, and this will be our last regular council meeting before we get there. So I've circulated the list of committees at the RSC, um, and they will be re ratified or the members reinstated there essentially um, one of the informal conversations that we've had in particular is around tourism and there was a suggestion that it would make sense that we add councillor Greenlaw to that committee on behalf of the council if that's the wishes of the group okay um, we've also talked about maybe taking on a more active role in local tourism promotion with our you know with our revamped VIC that we have going on out in the parking lot 
And I think that maybe that's something we can work towards over the next couple of coming into summer so that for next fall we're in a better position to have the winter to plan recognizing that April May is probably not going to be the most productive time to get something in place for the summer but I think it gives us an opportunity to talk about what that could look like for the village and how we can make sure that we're capitalizing on some of the regional tourism initiatives so questions or comments on that you guys are very agreeable tonight thank you all right, we have um, our 10-minute open session. And while we're here waiting to see if anyone's going to rush to the microphone to talk to us. <laughs> I'm like, my God, they're coming into the hallway now. <laughs> I'm just going to make sure um, our next item that we have on the agenda is NB Power. They're joining us via Zoom. I'm just going to let them know that we're just logging on. Um, they will talk to this when they are online, but they are going to give us a brief presentation. I told them 10 or 15 minutes, so we'll see how this goes, um, on smart meter usage. And then there will be an open house here on the island before they start in installation. They were hoping to have it this week, but that got rescheduled so sometime this month they will reschedule and be back here for a public information session but this will be a little preview for anybody who's watching and to give us a little bit of information ahead of that i did get a letter in the mail and i think i've almost filled the time until they've joined <laughs> Bob Scott, who is joining us here from MB Power, he is the contact that I talk to whenever we have power outages, so he's very familiar with Graham and Ann. He's the government liaison. There's Bob. So he's been very great to deal with over the last couple of years. So. All right. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Yeah. Is Stephanie in yet? There she is. Yeah. As Stephanie is the individual who knows all the way in my, I'm just the one that helps Bonnie from time to time her power so. <laughs> I was just telling them that. We're just doing a little techno. Okay, I think we're good. Um, so we have a quasi full house here, Bob. I'm just going to turn it over to you guys to share your screen, um, do a little introduction, and the floor is yours, and go from there. Hey. And I'll, I'll sound well, the time and step. over time. Okay. Are you giving us about 10, 12, 10 minutes about, or so? Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm hoping, yep. Okay, perfect. You go ahead, okay. Steph. Okay, great. Um, Thanks for letting us join your meeting this evening. Um, we don't actually have a presentation prepared per se. Uh, I just kind of wanted to talk about um, the plan that we have for deploying smart meters on Graham and Ann and uh, just the time frame around that and sort of express our desire to come to the island and, and do a community session to allow uh, the residents to come out and ask any questions they have about smart meters, um, how they work, uh, safety concerns, health issues, any of that kind of stuff. Um, we've been seeing that around the province. It's been quite helpful when we've had in-person community sessions um, to allow people to ask their questions. Um, so just, just to give you a, a little um, brief on what we're planning for Grand Manan. So one thing that we do know is that for meters um, that are on bases that are in like salty coastal areas, there tend to be uh, more issues when you pull those meters. So the bases um, 
are older and corroded and we end up having to do a lot of repairs. So we know that in advance from other experience, like when Nova Scotia Power did their smart meter deployment, um, they would have experienced that in a lot of the coastal areas. So our plan for Grand Manan is to come over and spend a day or two, hopefully with the full crew, uh, so we don't have to be there any longer than we need to be. Um, but bring over a lineman truck, make sure we have an electrician on hand with the parts uh, available to do any repairs that are required and um, just stay there and, and hunker down until we we'll get all the, the repairs done and the meters changed out. Um, so that, that's our plan. And right now we're targeting uh, the week of May the 20th to be uh, on the island. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions and I apologize if you can hear my dog. She was having a fit, just one second. That's always that. Um, so does anybody have any questions about what I've said so far? Questions? Councilor Green? Uh, the whole smart meter program, uh, what's the end benefit to the consumer, to me, to have a smart meter on my house? Sorry, I only caught the very end of that question. Okay, uh, the end user, me, what, what value, what benefits do I derive by having a smart meter on my house as opposed to the one that's been there, you know, forever, basically. So with the smart meters, um, we're able to give our customers more granular information about how they use their electricity. So today, um, as an MB Power customer, you can go and, and look at your bill and your consumption once a month, right? So you've got one reading a month that says you use 1,200 kilowatt hours, 1,300 kilowatt hours. With smart meters, we're, we're reading those meters every 15 minutes. Um, so we are able to uh, provide that detailed information to our customers on what we're calling a customer portal. So the portal's up and running. We launched it in March. And customers can go on and see uh, their energy usage in 15-minute, hourly, daily, weekly intervals. So you can actually... Um, hone in on when you're using energy, what times of the day, and it helps you uh, be able to go back and say, what did I do today? What was running today? Um, and really investigate uh, what might be consuming the electricity in your home. Um, so we really think that is one of the big benefits for customers is, is you'll have the power to be able to better manage your electricity bill. And so that's that's one. Uh, one of the other benefits of smart meters is that um, they allow us to know when your power is out. So today, uh, majority of our customers don't know that NB Power doesn't know when your power is out. So we rely on our customers to call us and let us know that there's an outage. With the smart meter, um, we know that the smart meter is out of power and we can start dispatching crews to figure out what is going on uh, before the customer calls us. So. Um, it'll be faster and more efficient restoration for our customers as well. Um, and we won't have to roll trucks like we would have in the past. Um, the other one too that is really a significant benefit to our customers is we can now remotely uh, disconnect and reconnect customers. So if you move and you need a disconnect and you move in somewhere else, you need to reconnect today, we have to roll the truck to do that. With the smart meters, we can actually do that from um, our office in Marysville, and uh, we don't need to roll the truck. So customers aren't waiting for you know, a day or two to get a disconnect or reconnect. We can do that you know, within a, a matter of minutes from the office in Marysville. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Sturgeon here. Uh, Smart meters, do you still require someone to traditionally come and read it every month or do, or, or is it read from Marysville as you put it? Yeah, so the way that smart meters work is they, the reading comes back to us at head office. So um, 
the meters send the data to what we call a CGR, which is a, a connected grid router. So we have one of those installed on Gram and Ann now. So the data goes to that and that data goes from that router back to our head office. So we no longer have to have uh, meter readers go out and read every month. Okay, thank you. So you said May 20th, what, like how long do you think it will take to do, to switch over the meters on the island? Did you say two days or what's your timeline for that? Yeah, so we're hoping two or three days. Um, we're, we're, so we've contracted out a third party to do our meter installation. So our plan is to get all of the crews that we have currently working um, on Grand Manan at the same time so that, you know, we're... We're being more efficient. We've got everybody there and we can get them done in two or three days. And like I said, uh, we know that there is a potential for some repairs that are gonna be required. MB Power covers all of that as well, just, just so you know. So when we pull the meter, um, we do a full inspection of the meter base. And if there's any uh, issues or safety concerns, then we pay for that as part of the uh, project to do the replacement. So we'll have, um, the line crew there available and ready to do the disconnect so that we can get the electrician um, to do the work and then do the reconnect so you know right now uh, we have to wait for that because it's in a sort of the priority queue with other emergencies and things happening um, in our daily operations but we want to make sure that when we come to the island we actually have somebody there so we're not waiting for a truck to get across the ferry that they're there and available um, if the repairs need to be done. Anyone else? You guys are getting off pretty easy tonight. Um, thank you for the for giving us the update. Um, I do think it'll be good to have the open house, and I appreciate having the information ahead of time. I think that gives us something to go out to talk to people about when they do start talking about this. So once you guys have the date, I trust Bob's going to let me know, and we can go from there. Yep. Yeah, I'll definitely do that, uh, Bonnie. And. Uh, yeah, just, uh, just so everybody understands, because sometimes dates just don't pop into people's brains, but the 20th is actually a holiday, so we'll be starting on the 21st. So it's, uh, it's, but she, as, as Stephanie said, it's the week of the 20th, so we've got uh, four days that week. Anyway, yes, yeah, so it'll be, our open house will probably be before the end of, month, end of April. So uh, as soon as we get an exact date, we'll come back to you, Bonnie, with that, with that date, okay? That, that sounds great. Thank you guys very much. Thank, thank you. Really Thanks appreciate for your the time. opportunity. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. See you guys later. Okay. See you soon. Bye bye. Okay, moving on to new business, um, Canadian Hydrographic Service, which is apparently me again. Um, it's on nautical chart. So it's an email that says, hello, I work with Canadian Hydrographic Sur Service and I just want to reach out regarding the new nautical chart 4340 that I'm compiling. We are not planning on including the name Gramanan Village on the chart. It does not exist on the current chart, and we see the village as being more of an administrative amalgamated area that does not hold value for the mariner. I just want to, <laughs> I just want to reach out to let you know this in case you disagreed and would like us to include it. We can include it if you feel it's important. If you'd like it to be included, would you be able to provide a position that you feel is best representative for the mariner? Thank you so much. Comments, questions? Um, Councillor Boyd. I'm just interested, like the fact that they reached out at all, is, is that something they do regularly? Like I use charts a lot, but I don't, it's just funny that they would think to reach out and be like, hey, once this new chart comes out, you're not gonna be on there. You're not on there now, but just so you know. <laughs> like, it, it, just, it just seems like a nice of them to do, but 
just kind of seems an unnecessary step for them. But it might be somebody's full time job, I guess. <laughs> They've consulted. Um, the only thing that I said, as long as we're being treated consistently with all the other administrative bodies or whatever we were referred to, so, but I, I don't see an issue with it if we haven't been there, mm -hmm. so. If there's a boat in front, there's something wrong. It would be because the lighthouse that's yeah. in the parking lot right. distracted. <laughs> okay, so we'll just say that we don't have a problem with not being a village of an nautical chart. Um, Streetlight request, CAO Rayner to address. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, in your council package, you'll see that there's an email from Dornell Green. Uh, it reads, I'm writing this email to request that a streetlight be installed in front of my house, 80 Cedar Street. From Carter Foster's up to Lloyd McFarland's, there are no streetlights. However, there are three light poles from Carter's to Lloyd's, with one being in front of my house. Thanks, Dornell Green. Questions or comments? Councillor Toll? Does the village have a policy on putting new ones up every year, like certain numbers? They used to. When we first moved here, we had one put up, and it was because there were so many that the village would purchase every year to whatever, if anybody wanted one. I don't know if that's a policy anymore or not, but maybe it was just lucky that year. I don't know. I don't think it has been for no. a while. It's really been more. I do more remember we requested one, and we did get one, and that was third year. It's been recently more on a as requested type okay. of basis. So, Councillor Green. Yeah, the, the only thing I remember about street lights is we always put a little extra in the budget, hope, thinking there may be a few more added because we paid per light. Uh, and the policy has always been sort of we won't put them on adjacent poles, but at least two poles. So, light. No light, light, no light, not that type of thing. And uh, I took a drive by there, and if we put one at his driveway, it would, it would be within those guidelines. It wouldn't be yeah. light on consecutive poles. So uh, I guess I'd make a motion that we install it, have the street light installed for uh, Dornell Green, Cedar Street. You heard the motion from Councilor Green. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Councilor Sturgeon. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Next up is UMMB request for letter. It says my name, but I'm going to turn it over to Councillor Boyd because he is our UMMB rep. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, it's pretty simple if anybody's had a chance to read it. Uh, it's got a lot to do with um, the mail outs that uh, the province has sent out, essentially blaming municipalities for your. Uh, assessment increases which is which is not true at all uh, they're just kind of trying to kick the blame down the road and make somebody else look like the bad guy so essentially what we uh, as executive and the board of UMB decided to put out to we put out a letter uh, from the board and the executive and we requested any uh, participating municipality also join us you know join our voice in saying that what you've done is wrong and you need to put the proper information out to the public. So if you've had a chance to read the letter, it's, it's just a form letter. All municipalities got the same one. We can add or subtract as we need fit, but it's it's basically just adding our voice to what the membership's already uh, requesting of the province. Questions or comments? Do you want to make a motion to send the letter? I will make a motion that uh, we sign and send the letter and add our name to the municipalities that are doing so as well. You heard the motion from Councillor Boyd. Do we have a seconder? A second by Councillor Greenlaw. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. 14 4 is Councillor Travel Expense. Councillor Sturgeon. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> I've been on here more or less for 20 years, a few brief absences, but uh, my memory is not quite clear on exactly when, years on different things, but uh, if I, my memory serves me correctly, I definitely know it was my first term, which was from 2004 to 2008, 
that uh, I believe it was Councillor Gr Philman Green, but I might be wrong on this, but, I, but uh, anyway, he brought up uh, to update our travel expenses at the time. And uh, also, so currently there are $10.70 for breakfast, around the neighborhood of $15 for dinner, and around the neighborhood of $25 for supper. And uh, even still, that's a maximum allowance. We still have to pass in a receipt in regards to anything that we pass in for meal allowances. And uh, Madam Mayor, I don't, everybody's well aware that the price of everything has gone up a lot, uh, especially lately. And now we're talking about possibly you know, close to 20 years, it's, it's time to update it. Uh, our fuel allowance has been uh, updated for travel because uh, you know that's basically a federal standard but uh, I'm talking with our treasurer she she wasn't aware of the time that there was a federal standard or anything in that regards and I, I believe my, Madam Mayor that it, it should be able uh, still have the same system where you have to pass in a, a receipt but I believe the maximum allowance should be go up at least 50 percent in that time uh, that's what I would feel comfortable with Questions or comments? Councilor Seems like I'm reaching for this a lot tonight, but mm -hmm. uh, can we uh, reach out to some of our other municipalities in this area and find what they're doing for that and try to be, the federal government, they're sort of known for their large S. Mm -hmm. They spend money quite handily. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my interpretation of that. Anyway, I think it would be good to see what our neighboring communities are doing and if they've had that policy for six months or six years which could impact how we evaluate that. Anyone else? Councillor Boyd. Uh, to that point, uh, at UMNB we do uh, we do mileage at uh, the CRA rate minus five cents which we currently have at 54 cents but I was just doing some some uh, texting back and forth with my accountant wife uh, and the CRA rate is now up to 68 cents so uh, now we renewed this policy in November of 2021, so it'll come up again. So we do that, which we're per currently 54 cents a kilometer. And we also do meals at 15 for breakfast, 20 for lunch, 30 for dinner with no receipts necessary. You just check the box. Uh, when I attend a meeting, the only receipt I have to hand in is my ferry because they pay my ferry. Instead of mileage, they just pay that. But uh, that's, that's what UMB does. It certainly wouldn't hurt. Um, from my time in town of St. Andrews, it was pretty similar as well. It was so much per meal. You just check your box. And you get it, you get it approved. Like with UMB, our executive director tells us at the end of every board meeting, you get lunch and supper yesterday and breakfast today because we're done before lunch. And so you check your boxes and you hand it in. That's that's what UMB does, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to to ask a few other neighbors as well. Uh, 15 for breakfast. 20 for lunch and 30 for dinner. Again, this was 2021, so I expect we'll, we'll uh, renew this at some point. And we currently are 54 cents per kilometer, but the CRA rate is now 68 cents, and we base that on CRA rate minus five cents. So. so those those are just some numbers. So are we good with getting some more information on what other municipalities are doing? Is that... Yeah. Councillor Sturgeon? I would be fine with that, Madam Mayor. It was, it was a little homework, it certainly goes a long way. So, but, uh, so, yeah, I would be very good with that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody. 14.5 um, is tourism, which I forgot was f further down on the agenda and talked about under the RSC update. So, I don't know if we have anything else we want to talk about. Uh, Okay, I have an old agenda. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Never mind. So far, we've been right on, and the rest of it looks like it is too. So I'll just keep my agenda and cross that part off. Um, rural plan request for PAC feedback, Councillor Green. Uh, in some conversations I've had around the community, and the, there seems to be some question about whether our rural plan that we adopted not too long ago has some issues that uh, whether it's interpretations or whatever 
that they may need some clarifications or we may need to clarify our bylaw. I would like to see us send a formal request to uh, our PAC asking for clarification. If what I'm hearing is fact or fiction, if it's fact, we'll have to deal with it. If it's fiction, we'll, we can ignore it. But if there are deficiencies or oversights, we should uh, get an official response to that before we do much. Comments, Councillor Sturgeon? Yes, uh, my question is, uh, we still have our local PAC, because when we were Southwest uh, before, we was part of their overall PAC, and then we had, uh, had hired our own for after that, and we had our own PAC, which was fine. So are we still along that line, or what's the current setup, I guess? Yeah, we currently have a PAC. It's on island residents, island members who are on it. Three councillors, I believe, and three members of the community. So I assume, Madam Mayor, that Southwest is part of the conversation when the, when the PAC has a, has a meeting? I don't normally attend the PAC meetings, so I'm going to defer to the chair of the PAC, which would be Councillor Toll. Yes. Um, we use the RSC when we have questions that can't be easily answered, and they do the reporting, and they go over everything with us, and then we make our decision from there. If it's something simple, we just talk about it and make our decision from there, and we're a learning progress. I'm sure everybody's doing, you know, their best, and you know, everybody wants what's best for Ireland. But uh, I guess the question is, if if Southwest is basically enforcing the rules for us, the most that's where our inspector yes, comes okay. from. Okay. And then he has nothing to do with the PAC. He's just okay. to inspect and whatnot. But then, if there's someone who wants a variance, they have to go through the process with the RSC to get things written up and get the for the for the um, process put together. And okay. then we have a meeting and decide what okay. will happen. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, so you're requesting. I'll make a motion that we send a letter to the PAC asking the question they want to raise. You heard the motion from Councillor Green. Do we have a seconder? Okay. Seconded by Councillor Green. A question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Um, item 14.6 is Island Fest, and Councillor Ballantyne was going to discuss that, but I might start it off and hopefully get some help from around the table. Um, we've had some informal discussion about where we're going to go with Island Fest. There's been some challenges with it the long weekend in August because it falls up against a couple of other major festivals on the mainland and we tend to lose people and it's hard to attract people to come during that weekend. We've talked about some different dates, but it was, it was getting hard to find a date that was workable. So one of the suggestions recently was maybe instead of having one weekend dedicated to a festival, have, a, have the events, but have them spaced out over the summer so that there's something going on at different times on different weekends. So if you're traveling one weekend, you might miss something, but you could be here for some other part of it. Um, it takes some of that timing pressure off people who are organizing in particular that have to be very present and very in place for the two weeks really leading up to it and then the week after. And it allows us to sort of spread that out, the timelines around a little bit. Um, I don't know if I've articulated that well, and I don't know if anybody else has any comments or wants to add anything to that or has any thoughts on what we do with Island Fest. But at this point, it's April, so we kind of, if we're going to do something, we need to decide what we're going to do so we can move forward with it. Councillor Boyd. Uh, <clears throat> I like that suggestion, Madam Mayor. That's pretty similar to what Fredericton does in the winter now for Frostville. Frostville. Uh, it's pretty much like a, a six or eight week and there's something every weekend, of course it's a bigger municipality and more hands and whatever, but it, they, they draw it all out so it's, and they announce it like well before Christmas, so then you've got your map and your, your itinerary and you can go through, so I think, I think that's a, it's a good idea. Yes, Madam Mayor, uh, also thinking as well, like what the village does in preparation for this. I know for during the Christmas holidays, for example, we usually send out a, 
a flyer to the community saying what, what's going on and, and uh, a few other events as well that we do that. So th that would be something to prepare and so that people can plan their summers for San Jose and for that. Thank you. Councillor Turner. I would recommend that we have like an online calendar for the summer that ha has everything because then you can change it at the drop of a hat kind of thing and we know that some people, you know, something might back out because of something unforeseen but if you have like one on our Facebook page or even a special page, you know, for summer events then I think it would be the easiest way for people to see what's going on and when and plan around it, you know, well in advance. And as things come on, we can just add them, you know, like if there's something coming that we didn't know about in May, we can add it in June or whatever. I think it would make it really easy for people. Um, the clerk and I have discussed a community events calendar on our website from time to time, and it might be a good way to sort of launch, soft launch that and see how it works and how much work there is in keeping it updated, because I am conscious of that try it for the summer and see how it goes but I think that's a good idea and I see Councillor Sturgeon's lean forward but it probably makes sense as well to do a mail out in addition to mm -hmm. and say that it can be updated on the online site but then people have a tangible at the beginning of summer of what the original is yep. but check for updates as we go Great. is that fair yep. okay so we will proceed with a Diverse Island Fest, it's not the right D word, but I can't come up with it, but it's distributed Island Fest, so it's over the summer. Um, I, I think if anybody has events, it's supersized. If anybody has events, I know that there are a lot of people in the community that had different things they were responsible for. I'd say reach out to us and we will, you know, work on getting things organized and go from there. Okay. 14, the next one is TransAlta, the windmill project, CAO Rayner. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> in your packages, uh, we included kind of an overview of a proposed 14 windmill wind farm. This, uh, this is very early stages, we don't have a lot of information, but this came to our attention because uh, Jet Pro Consultants, who is the village's consultant who looks after our instrument approach and departure from our airport. So when this came to our attention, we have sent a few questions to them asking about project timeline, what stage they are in planning, proposals, permits, and any flexibility in the location of the turbines. Uh, one email that we did get back fairly quickly from TransAlta stated that, that they are very early in preliminary stages of the project doing a pre-feasibility study. Expected commissioning of the project will be quarter four, 2029. Turbine locations are flexible if a buffer area is defined from the airport. So again, this is very, very preliminary. I mean, 2029 is a ways away, but we just did this information come in. I just wanted to make sure that everyone around the table was up to date. Questions or comments, Councillor Sturgeon? Well, this is at least the fourth project that I've had proposed in the last 20 years that I recall. And uh, of course, like any subject matter, there are those who are for and those who are against and uh, Anyway, we'll just see where it goes from here, I would say. If it get too worked up over it yet, I wouldn't think. Councillor Turner? Um, just looking at the, at the chart and those, the turbine numbers need to move down if you're looking at it and it looks wonky. Um, like T6, T1, and T2 would be those ones below it. So it's kind of, the numbers are shifted up on those. So it looks like there's one you know, way out there, but yeah. drop those down and they match up. So I just wanted, in case anybody was looking at like proximity to other things, they're definite, like T8 would be the one behind the pin, T9 would be the one below and to the left of the pin. It just kind of, yeah. yep. <laughs> Anyone else? 
Councillor Layton. I'm just happy it's not our alternative power source when they shut down our JATS in 2026. <laughs> I may have had a text from Mr. Scott that he is setting up our meeting for us. I believe he said this week because as he wanted to come here, I've been nagging him about our follow-ups. So he will be having a call before the end of the week on the generator. So that would be my update on that. Yeah, I think this is one of those things we have to continue to follow. I don't think we need to go DEFCOM 1 just yet, but <laughs> Councillor Turner. I was just going to say that Transalta did say that really the big thing for them last time was conveyance to the island of those parts, and they have a solution to that. So the actual, it sounded in the conversation I had with them that things were moving forward quite positively on their side so it may be a longer timeline but it does sound like they're relatively sure of going forward anyone else okay committee reports um, the first up was a library committee report so we will defer that till the next meeting when the deputy mayor will be here 15-2 is the solid waste committee councillor toll Thank you. I just wanted to, there, in your package, you've got a little um, picture of the food cycler program that we had started in the fall. And I have received the final information on this project, and it was completed September of 2023. So we had 50 uh, machines go out, 10 of the big ones and 40 of the small ones, purchased by the residents. Of these units, we had two that malfunctioned. One, the first day, didn't work, and they replaced it within two days. The second one had been used for about four or five months and the blade went on it and I got the person to call them, gave them the email, gave them contact and she had a new one the next week. So I'm really happy with how they've followed through with problems. I think they've done a great job. Um, everybody I spoke to about them had said that they really found them easy to use and were really happy with them. Um, I asked everyone to fill out the surveys. Only 26 people responded to the survey. But from that information, we got a lot of information. And I think the numbers, that people can still fill out the survey if they want. I'm pretty sure it's still linked to our web page. Or, so it takes about three minutes to fill all the questions out and send it in. So you can see what we've diverted here out of the, the 26 surveys that came in. Like we did, we diverted 14.3 metric tons of CO2 or carbon. We saved um, 3.2 gas powered vehicles off the road annually. 11 ton metric tons of food waste was diverted, 34 garbage bags annually for that many people. Um, they averaged the 4.4 star average for rating on the machine. Um, of most of them are going to be reusing, continuing to use them and mix them in with their other recycling. Um, so you can double these numbers. You can see we've made quite an impact just using those little machines on what goes to the dump, what saves us the money from um, going for tipping fees and whatnot. And I know I have one of the bigger machines that I've used steady since I've had it. Almost every day and a half, it's getting put on the, plugged in and, and done up. Plus I also have uh, stuff going out into my big composter in the yard because you can't put big hunks of anything in that. You have to chop it up or whatever. So I think it was really good. Um, I had a nice chat with her and they presented all this information to me and we are on their list for any time they have anything that they feel might be a benefit to our community. Any questions or anything on that? Um, and our tipping fees, I hear, is going up, I believe. So it'll be nice if we can you know, do our little bit. I mean, it may not be a lot, but it's something. And we're still working with circular materials to figure out. It was kind of interesting, because I spent the last four or five days, every time I open something, and go, is this crinkly paper? Or is this sparkler paper? <laughs> Where, what pile would this go in? Where would that go? So I can see where there's going to be some issues with that because it's a lot of little things that you have to sort. But I think we can come up with a solution that will make it, you know, you can put more choices in one bag instead of, but that we're still working on that. So, yes. um, Councillor Green? On the form, it, it does say St. Andrews. It, well, the right hours. one was done up and sent out otherwise because we didn't, Bonnie noticed that and I called her and she changed it, but that was after I'd already given it to Esme to do up so yes they're fully aware of that and she yeah she fixed it and we got the right one <laughs> anyone else 
Okay, moving right along, transportation report, Councillor Layton. Thanks, Madam Mayor, fellow councillors. Just a little quick update, I guess, on our, our ferry challenges. Um, remember back in March, we met with, we traveled to Fairchild and met with the minister and deputy minister and, and had a good conversation. And, and from that conversation, I guess we, um, we met with the provincial treasury board last week, week before last, last week, and discussed at length our needs, our wants from the village's perspective. It's uh, another box checked off, I guess, in the lengthy process of acquiring a replacement vessel for the Graham and M5. Recent mechanical breakdowns over the past few months have highlighted the anxiety of travelers and the need to move this file forward in a timely manner for a dependable and reliable service to sail us into the future. So the process is going on. We're on top of it. The mayor is very aware of, um, she's very connected in that ball field. and. Um, we're confident that this is going forward in a positive direction. Awesome. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Questions or comments? Um, I will say, I think Councillor Layton touched on this, but the mechanical breakdowns were a bit of a wake up call. And I think that's something that we need to focus a little bit more on is the extended breakdowns. I, you know, the more we get talking about it, the more I think about the people in February sitting in the parking lot for a long duration of time. And fortunately, it was relatively mild. Yeah. But if that's minus 20 or minus 30, sitting in a vehicle for eight hours in February just isn't, it's not practical and it's not a solution. So I think that's one of the things I'd like to put on our list to be dealing with with the province and coastal is what happens in those situations. How can we find accommodation for people who maybe don't have the financial means to go somewhere if the ferry's not leaving till two in the morning. So I, I mean, I don't think that's gonna be a quick and easy process either, but I do think that's one of the things that we, we need to have those conversations around, particularly Definitely. the fact that it was on Sundays and it was a lot of teens and young children that were traveling, so. Okay, moving on, bylaws, Greenfield request for variance. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is the second time this has come up. I think it was back in maybe possibly 2022 when we dealt with this the first time. But uh, I did receive an email from Greenfield. I will read it. It said, hope this email finds you well. Considering that some time has passed since the initial denial of our request for variance on bylaw number 30-01 for the work being carried out at North Head, we thought we would reach out again for reconsideration. As you are aware, our work is very tide dependent. A variance to this bylaw would allow for us to work more efficiently and ultimately expedite completion of the project. Thank you, Tyler Roy. <laughs> Questions or comments, Councillor Layton? Uh, going back to that decision, I think it was made in haste a long time ago. I, I totally support those guys being able to work and get this thing behind us and completed and I support 100% that we give them the variance in my opinion. Council Green? I thought the resolution to that was that because they are an agent of the federal government our municipal bylaws didn't apply to them. Yeah, I and so that we you know if they want to honor that bylaw that by all means they can but we have no, no way to enforce it, as I understood. You are correct, but it is nice of them to respect our bylaw. I believe, though, two years ago, there was a motion to not accept the variance, and I think that they respected that motion to abide by the bylaws. So I, we can just tell them that there would so be... This is this is about hours, isn't it? Like when they work and how long they work. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing what? No. Madam Mayor, I move that we grant them their variance as requested. Heard the motion from Councillor Sturgeon. Do we have a seconder? Second that. Seconded by Councillor Layton. Question? Councillor Green? I don't think we should grant them their variance because I think we should tell them it's outside of our bylaw that they're exempt from it, but 
village council does not grant variances, the PAC and the building inspector do. So we ran into that when we were looking for the musical thing, right? Uh, so it, for us to grant a variance, we're stepping beyond our purview. Yeah. That is true. My understanding from the RSC is the noise bylaw is outside of building and planning. That's why it's come to the, the council, not to them. Any other question? Councillor Boyd? I believe another issue with the bylaw is enforcement because last I understood, and maybe this has changed some with our agreement with the Service Commission now, it's the RCMP that's to enforce the bylaw, and last I understood, they weren't too interested in doing that. But I don't think we should be taking an authority we don't have mm -hmm. and exercising it because that sets the precedent for uh, the future. The fa fact that they're notified that they're no longer that our bylaws don't apply to them. I mean, that was our our lawyer told us that I believe. So I mean, you know, we've done what gone as far as we legally can, and for them having honored our decision, even though it wasn't a legal requirement. Well, thank you for those for those two years, or whatever. But. Uh, Whoops. Uh, yeah, I don't think we say granting a variance, in my opinion, would be. I think we should just tell them that we have no authority in this matter. Councillor Turner? What if we told them, like, just reiterated that this fall, you know, this doesn't fall within our realm, but that council expressed no opposition to it? Something like that to let them know that, you know. We, we certainly aren't going to fight them on it. Councillor Sturgeon, you have a motion on the floor? I do, and I, I would rescind the motion, and I do like Councillor Turner's suggestion. I think that's the best overall solution in my regards. Councillor Layton, you seconded. You're okay with rescinding? Okay, so I understand that we will send a letter saying that we have because it's a federal government property, we have no jurisdiction and we have no opposition to them working beyond the noise bylaws. Is that fair? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Item number 17 is approval to pay the following invoices from the general operating fund. From AJW Mechanical for the pump and motor assembly, $2,092.43. From Island Home Hardware, the February and March statements for $9,392.96. And Dutchman Contracting for Brush Cutting for $13,713.75. I so move, Madam Mayor, to pay the uh, invoices. Heard the motion from Councillor Sturgeon. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Greenlaw. Question? Councillor Boyd? The brush cutting is at the airport? Yes. Yeah, okay. Councillor Green? Um, wasn't there a cap on what that was supposed to be per year? We have 10000 in the budget allocated to for bush cutting at the airport. I'm not sure if that was for, if that included the tax or if it's 14 plus tax. Anyone else? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Item number 18 is the transfer of funds. The first one is a motion to transfer $63,860 from the general operating fund to the general capital fund. I make that motion. You heard the motion by Councillor Greenlaw. Do we have a seconder? I'll second that. Seconded by Councillor Boyd. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. 18-2 is a motion to transfer $76,895 from the General Operating Fund to the General Capital Fund. So 
we'll move by Councillor Boyd. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Turner. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Closed session, we have three items. One is a property issue for the Dark Sky Preserve Eco Lodge. 19.2 is legal for automated weather station license renewal. And 19.3 is financial hangar update. I'm looking for a motion to go to closed session. So moved, Madam Mayor. I'll second that. Motion by Councillor Sturgeon, second by Councillor Toll. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. I'm going to have to put a little air conditioner under this <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I'll recall this meeting to order. It's 10 after 9 p.m. We were in closed session for three items. The first was a property issue with Dark Sky Preserve, and we're gonna ask for a little bit more information before we respond on that one. Item number two was a legal issue with the Automated Weather Station license renewal. Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor I make a motion that uh, we renew the 10-year uh, lease with Environment Canada upon the clarification of the payment terms. You heard the motion from Councillor Sturgeon. Do we have a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Turner. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. 19.3 was financial for a hangar update. I move that we uh, transfer money from the Capital Reserve Fund for a down payment on the plans for the hangar to the uh, general fund um, and pay that pending the Capital Borrowing Board's approval of this action. You heard the motion from Councillor Green. Do we have a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Greenlaw. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Our next regular council meeting will be May 6th here at the Community Center at 7.30 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Good night.